And so, what are we to think from this whole story of Solomon? A few things obviously come to mind. First of all, God obviously did his part for Solomon, right? He gave him the wisdom like he prayed for, and he let him have money and everything else. I mean, Solomon suffered in large part by being blessed too much. It's like he had too many privileges, too many blessings, and kind of uh, that kind of captured his attention, probably became enamored with the gift more than with the giver. That's probably a lot of his problem right there. At his heart, you see that he moved away from a life of serving God to a life of self-gratification. You know, what he described there in Ecclesiastes, it was just total self-gratification, self-glorification. And a lot of us think that that's what's going to make us happy. I think that, uh, frankly, we should be able to identify with this. How many of us are striving in our lives? Yes, striving pretty hard, as a matter of fact, to be admired by other people, you know, to be considered cool striving in our lives for money for that big career for those uh, that big uh, life of uh, self-gratification for all that uh, hot action with sex partners and all that kind of stuff and we think all this self-gratification is bound to pay that's what's going to make you feel good man right there that's where it's at and certainly what i believed never seemed to work out though it's funny the more I would pursue self-gratification, hedonism, getting higher, partying harder, it seemed like it was, there would be moments where it seemed like it was pretty good, but they very fleeting. And it always seemed like I needed more and stuff. I sometimes would have those honest moments where I would sit there and realize I'm not really a happy person. I'm not happy. Pretty miserable. Actually, I was thinking of killing myself. So that's, that's a great life when you're that depressed. It's pitiful. And that's because this whole, there is a way the Bible teaches that seems right unto man, but the end thereof is the path of death. We think we know what will bring happiness in life. Self-gratification. No. No, that won't bring it. No matter how much he gratified himself, it didn't lead Solomon to happiness. You read his own description of what it was like. It just became more and more pointless. And so Solomon illustrates a verse that is in the New Testament addressed to us as Christians that we should ponder. Well, I think, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 12. He, there Paul says, if you think you're standing firm, be careful that you don't fall. You know, it's when we, it's when we are experiencing complacency. It's when we are feeling like I've got it together I've arrived I see it the way it is now that sometimes can be the most dangerous time yeah I think there's plenty to worry about you know uh, always and the biggest thing to worry about is you know my faithfulness and whether I'm going to remain faithful you know we don't have to look far we look out and uh, in the, the body of Christ and we see people that lose it uh, lose following Christ. Uh, I mean, it happens on a pretty regular basis. It's happened all throughout my life. I've never gotten used to it. I've never. It always shocks me every time, and yet I realize, you know, I'm no different. And so there should be a humility here. That's probably part of what he lost. You know, uh, imagine people just praising and glorifying you constantly, like they were with him. There's one of the dangers of being so you know rich and successful and admired the very things that we want for ourselves uh, can destroy us because they create that egotism it turns into a big ego trip and finally of course that last passage a very important one God's heart that you know no matter how far you drift away there's always the option of turning back to God what about that he says, I'll accept you. I'll rescue you. If you want to turn back to me. Why don't you consider turning back to the Lord? Just, just like he said, you know, if you turn back with your heart to me and start to follow me again. 
And uh, we have the promise. And, you know, Jesus said, to as many as come to me, I will in no way cast out. You know, he says, I will, I'll accept you back. And Jesus will pay the price you owe for all the wrongdoing in your life. You won't have to answer to God for that because he's taken care of that through Christ. And you can have that free gift of having the, the Spirit of God enter you. Wow, what an undeserved blessing that would be.